Does this actually happen? Players agents, players PR teams are briefing the media on a match day about what's going on in the club. And it was the first time that I'd ever sort of seen it and known it happen. Um, and it really unnerved me. But it's happening at Manchester United now. They're at it. They're at it. The PR teams, the... Um, their marketing teams, their agents, they're at it. They're protecting themselves they're in self-preservation of their own player. But what they don't realise is, unfortunately, that when they do go and speak to the media, those media people come and speak to us. So we find out about it. So we know who's briefing. And the reality of it is we don't like it. Now, I'm not going to obviously, you know, we're not going to throw people under a bus here because obviously we, you know, you have that sort of journalistic respect. But the fact of the matter is they're at it, just like the Chelsea team were all those years ago. This Manchester United team are at it. Self-preservation, looking after one another, excuses all the time. Stop it. Gary Neville has been quite vocal about Manchester United's problems over the last few years, hasn't he? And here he's saying he's using journalistic respect by not calling out any Manchester United player who's currently leaking stories to the press. I think he's wrong to do so. I want to speak about that in this video. I want to speak about Harry Maguire and why I personally, I feel like I'm done with Harry Maguire. And now I've done a video last week where we said we need to talk about Harry Maguire. We spoke about from a purely footballing perspective, from a captain's perspective, what's he doing, what's he not doing. And now with the continued leaks that are happening at Manchester United at the moment, I feel like I've got to do another video on it and explain exactly why. This is not a feeling that has again been stemmed from the last week or two. I'm going to go back as far as October. I could go back further than that if I really wanted to, to explain exactly how widespread this problem is at Manchester United and why it's absolutely at the core of our problems. Before I do begin, ladies and gents, please consider um, subscribing to United People's TV. If you're new in town, hit that uh, notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live. But let's please talk about everything that's happening. As I said, I can go back to October here when stories emerged that the dressing room, look, was divided over tactics, selection, and Solskjaer's inability to deal with Ronaldo and Greenwood's lack of cohesion. Um, Gary Neville at that time saying, look, here we are. The players, PR, and social media teams are working hard. This is back in October. This isn't Ralph Ragnick time. You go there, for, fast forward to what? Four weeks after Ragnick was appointed, leaks of unrest over Ragnick's methods at Manchester United says all you need to know about that squad. And... This is what I mean. When it comes to Manchester United, all we want to do as fans is sit there, go to the game, watch the game, see United improve week on, week in, week in, week out, get towards those trophies. That's all we want. But at the moment, we're having to deal with so much bullshit and it's constant and it's, it, it's a real signal of how unstable Manchester United is as a football club. Because look, as I said, we go back to October with the Solskjaer. This is this, not something that started under Ralph Ragnick. Started a while ago. It's, this happened under Moyes. Teams were leaked under Moyes. Basically, as soon as Fergie left, it's been a free-for-all player power grab that slowly, slowly infected the club, and we just can't get rid of it. Go back to December there. Then what happened? Of course, we've got the Anthony Martial and Ralph Radnick situation. Gary Neville at the start of the video there, talking about self-preservation. That's exactly what that is. Jesse Lingard, he joined the self-preservation train when he came out and said basically the Ragnar was a liar. As it's transpired, it was basically a miscommunication. It looked like Lingard was talking to Murto and Ragnar was being told something completely different. But again, self-preservation, both by Anthony Martial, self-preservation by Jesse Lingard. Then we go forward to these Ted Lasso stories that came out saying that Chris Armas, comparing Chris Armas' training techniques to literally a parody American coach comedy character. More leaks coming out. And it's coming from somewhere. And then, of course, everything that's happened in the last 24 hours just makes you more angry. Christian Falk here yesterday reporting that English players like Harry Maguire and Marcus Rushford, Marcus Rashford and co. are irritated that Cristiano Ronaldo wants to leave the dressing room with his own clique. There is a risk of a split in the team. Now, the first thing I want to say about this, and I said it on the live stream this morning, I'll say it again now. There will, of course, be cliques in the dressing room. Bruno Fernandes, Diogo Delo, Bruno, uh, and Cristiano Ronaldo all speak Portuguese. They're naturally going to have more conversation. It's going to create a bit of a clique. I'm sure Rafa Varane and Paul Pogba speak in French to each other more so than anything else. Does that make mean that they're part of a dressing room clique? And this can, it means they're chatting to each other in the native language. Cliques exist in dressing rooms. Cliques have always existed in dressing rooms. I guarantee you that Rian Vidic had a bit of a clique when they were centre-back partners, just in the same way that maybe Scholes and Keane did, in the same way that maybe Van Nistelrooy and, and Rooney did. 
Does it mean that they're not teammates though? No. Does it mean that they don't go out on the pitch and give everything for that shirt? No, it does not. So there's a difference between cliques and unrest. I want to sort of put that out there before we move on. But of course, you've seen what's happened with this Christian Falk story and everything that's happened since. You've got Rashford who has come out and categorically basically denied it, saying, I'll be just making this up as we go along now then. Please stop looking for divides. And the strange thing here is the fact that Christian Falk came back again and doubled down on what he said. So this guy really trusts his information. Now, I sort of, I spoke about that uh, in the live stream again this morning. I said, look, Christian Fout was a man who on the 24th of November 2021 said that Manchester United were not interested in Ralph Radnick and he wasn't going to become our manager. And then quite literally within 24 hours, a deal was announced. So uh, he's not exactly got the strongest reputation. People are trying to link the fact that Rafa Hernick, uh, Raphael Hernickstein has come in uh, as an advisor for um, Ralph Radnick. And now this is coming out. They're linking two and two and two because they're all German. Of course, it's true. Uh, I spoke to Guido Schaefer about what um, Raphael Hörnigstein's position was going to be. And he did say that basically he was going to link him back to the German press because he's not given an interview to anybody in Germany. He's not given an, an interview to anybody really in the UK, apart from Sky, etc. since he started. And, and Raphael Hörnigstein is, is to help him with the media inquiries that he's getting, not necessarily to be leaking all this stuff to the press. But the thing that I can't, I can't overlook anymore is the fact that all of this all of this has happened on this man's watch. Harry Maguire has been captain of Manchester United when stories first emerged back in October about a split under Solskjaer, when stories first emerged about a split under Ralph Ragnick, when the stories came out, I don't think this is Harry Maguire's fault, but this has all happened under his watch, the Martial situation, the Lingard situation, more dressing room leaks. And now we've got a situation where Harry Maguire is named by Christian Falk here, Marcus Rashford is named by Christian Falk. Who is the one to respond? Marcus Rashford. Now, you might go that and say, Sam, you're an idiot. This is simply self-preservation and Marcus Rashford only looking after his best interests, his, his, his own interests. And of course, I reckon that will be part of it. But I also am pretty damn angry that my captain over here has remained silent throughout this whole process. And it, it's just another... Another example where I don't think Harry Maguire has taken the responsibility seriously that that armband gives him at Manchester United. When you are, I've, I've said this so many times, but I feel like I have to keep reiterating it. When you are captain of Manchester United, you are held to a different level of scrutiny. Your standards have to be higher. You have to be the person that everybody turns towards for answers. And this is a man who was supported through and through by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when everything kicked off in Mykonos. Manchester United as a football club would have had every right to strip him of his armband there and to demote him to the reserves as punishment for what happened out in Greece. Instead, the club stood by Maguire. They stood, they stood by him, supported him. And what are we looking at now? Are we looking at a, a, a response from that? Are we seeing the same sort of loyalty from Harry Maguire? No. This is a man that you can't tag on Instagram because he doesn't want to take the criticism. He doesn't want to, I'm sure it, uh, part of it gets too abusive, so I can understand that to a certain degree. But when you, it's just, I think it's really pissed me off to see Marcus Rashford coming out and saying something here, despite the fact that Harry Maguire's name is first on that list. And I'm hearing separate stories about Harry Maguire being the centerpiece of the frustration and the divide in the dressing room because there are certain Manchester United players that want that armband taken away from him. And there are other players that don't want it taken away from him. And it feels like Maguire, for me, is the centerpiece of all of it. That's where a lot of the frustrations are relying around. And that comes down to the fact that he is the captain. All right? If he wasn't the captain, if Harry Maguire was Victor Lindelof and he was playing as badly as Harry Maguire is playing, what would happen? Not too much. It wouldn't be too much of a furor. But this is a player, as I said, the price tag. You can talk about the price tag if you want. I don't really care about the price tag. All right? But when you've got a player there who's Harry Maguire, who's been supported, who's been our captain for 18 months and has gone through and been our captain during unrest and leaks under Solskjaer, during unrest and leaks at the start of Radnick's reign, during unrest and leaks that are continuing to happen almost on a weekly basis and you're the captain and this is happening and you're not saying anything, then just leave. What's the, what is the point of you having that armband on your arm? And don't point, to, don't point towards... Uh, he was decent against Brighton. Okay, I'm not saying that he played badly in that game. But don't pull towards that as evidence that he's turning it around. 
He has to take so much more responsibility, public responsibility for being Manchester United's captain and what that means. And we just haven't seen it enough. And these continued leaks, as I said, look, going back to October, December, two different players coming out and undermining their manager. Ted Lasso stories that are coming out. Everything that's coming out now from Christian Falk. It's story on story on story that are happening under his watch as captain. And he, out more than most of those players, has an ability to stop that. He has an ability to try and unite that dressing room. I don't, I don't think it's within his power anymore. I think that dressing room's lost. We talk about how, how when managers lose the dressing rooms and it's game over for them. I think it's game over for Harry Maguire. He's lost that dressing room. There's, it, it seems seemingly he can't unite that dressing room together because if 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 he if he was going to do it, he would have done it after those leaks after Solskjaer. He would have done it after those leaks after Randnick. He would have done it after the after the undermining from Lingard and Martial. He would have done it after the leaks about Ted Lasso. He would have done it so many times before. And I'm personally just done with it. For me, Harry Maguire is the centerpiece of these. I would say it's a dressing room split. I don't think it's a dre Of course, these leaks are coming out, right? And, and Gary Neville there, as I said, going back to what Gary Neville said at the start of the video, for me, uh, Gary Neville's out there talking about journalistic respect. Screw your journalistic respect, Gary. Your respect should be towards Manchester United first and foremost. That's why I said my agenda is about Manchester United. There shouldn't be any journalistic respect for anybody who's leaking. And look, it might not be the players directly. It might be their agents, the PR teams, trying to gain favour with the media by leaking teams to them. But the players have to... They're savvy. They're smart. You know what to tell agents and you know what not to tell agents. Hardly any of these players inside this Manchester United team have got Manchester United's best interests at heart. And I don't think Manchester United can rely on Harry Maguire anymore as captain. And I've now, look, I support Ralph Randick and what Ralph Randick is doing. But the longer it goes on with him wearing the armband, the more damage it's doing to Manchester United and also starting to damage Ralph Randick's ability to make decisions. Because if he can't make that decision, it's going to start reflecting on other decisions. I want to know where you stand on all of this. Maybe I'm going too harsh. Look, I've always said that I don't do witch hunts. This isn't a witch hunt. All right. This really is not a witch hunt. This is me off the back of months and months and months of leaks and unrest and dressing room splits. Stories coming out to the press. And that there's no smoke without fire is what I say. And it's, what, it's the truth. And all of this has happened under his watch as captain. I think the armband should be taken away from him. I think United need to move on because somehow we need to close these. We need to fix these leaks. How do we fix these leaks? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me, Harry Maguire is the centerpiece of all of this. It's happened in his dressing room. He hasn't been able to control it. Okay, give it to someone else. Let's see if something else can change then. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But I'll tell you what, United are a circus right now. Absolute circus. It's, it's frankly embarrassing.